So welcome back friends to a beautiful and snowy day on the homestead. This was a very nice surprise. We are in a major storm warning. There are some folks that are predicting that we may have as much as over 50 inches of snow uh, up on the mountain. So who knows what we're gonna get here. But I thought I was getting ready to hook up the snow plow uh, and clear everything out, get all the cars brought in for this big snow blast. And I thought, let's try that snow blower. I know a lot of you have asked to see the snow blower and see if we can get that thing working. So let's go hook it up and see how it does. Conditions are perfect today. It's, it's 16 degrees, a very dry snow, so there should be no excuses uh, for it not to work. So real quickly, if you're just joining us, this is a, uh, a Yanmar a 60 horse YT tractor uh, that we, a bit of a prototype, but we're trying this out. We're working with Yanmar on this, uh, a Skid Pro. This is a skid steer type of a rotary uh, snowblower. Uh, so we've got the power pack on the back uh, and we'll get this thing hooked up. It's got the chute that turns, you know, just your typical snowblower like you see on a skid steer. Had some trouble with it freezing up last time. So I've went through everything and, and everything seems to be working properly. Um, we're gonna tr we'll try it again in here. So let's hook it up and then we'll take it out on that dry snow and see, see, what, see what it does. It is very cold today. I think it's right around 15, 16 degrees. Everything is iced up. I use these, the torches, uh, just not hot enough to hurt anything, but uh, just to melt the ice on them so that the, these are the big flathead couplers. See, it's all frozen there. Uh, big flathead couplers because it, they, they take so much. Boy, that's really frozen. They take so much uh, volume, these blowers here. Everything just becomes more difficult when things get cold like this. It's, oh, that worked pretty good. I like these couplers. They have really been trouble free. Oh, we also have this uh, plugger here, this trailer style plug. Oh, look at that. That's all. This is, I got to move this thing. This is not, not the ideal location. You can get water in it. All right, let's go engage the power pack. So to get the snowblower going, we'll have to put the power takeoff in gear. Next, we engage the PTO. All right, something's going on. This is our, this is the switch right here. This uh, controls the, uh, the direction of the chute, left and right. And this button here is the, the top of the chute, which uh, how, how far the snow blows up, up and down. I just wired that in, it just sits on top of the cab here. Last time I had to carry this hoe in my pry bar, I will break the, in the back to, to get the uh, snow unclogged out of the chute and break the uh, frozen up uh, impeller. Here we go, 540 RPMs.
and therein lays the problem right there. That was one inch of snow or so, and I didn't even I didn't disengage the PTO. Um, it just uh, it's the impeller stopped turning, frozen. I I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna have to get the pry bar now. This is what I ran into last time. The pry bar to work it loose. Something is something is not functioning properly because that's just not that's just not usable. So this should. I mean that that's all that took uh, to break that loose was at pry bar. Some little pebble is in there, and it 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 completely stops stops it. So uh, I didn't disengage the PTO or anything. It's just it just doesn't work. It doesn't work at work at all. Something is definitely wrong. So I I don't know. I don't know what it is. I've I called into the factory, uh, the Skid Pro that makes this, and they gave me a couple things to check, and I checked it, checked the power pack, and all it seems to be working. So I don't, uh, I don't know. Let's go, let's go put on the the blade, get something done. I've always liked the motto that uh, pin reels, the fishing reel. They they make the big offshore fishing reels. What they've always used. If I'm paraphrasing here, but it was make it simple, make it work. And uh, that, that's kind of, I think we're getting into the realm of that right now. The Snowblade is uh, it's such a simple design, but it's so effective. It works so good up to a point, up to the point where the snow gets really, really deep. And then there's, when there's no place to put it, then um, that becomes a problem. And that's what I ran into with Jeff's uh, uh, driveway uh, last year, was that when I tried to plow as wide as I could, and then when we got to the end of it, uh, or after we plowed and plowed and plowed, it kept going narrower and narrower, narrower and narrower. I had no place to put anything. Um, and then I almost, one more snowstorm and I wouldn't have been able to plow anymore. So that's why the whole blower thing is very appealing, but um, we've, we've, got to, we've got to figure something out because this is uh, just uh, pretty much useless. You know what, on second thought, I'm not gonna put this in the shop. It's just taking up space. We'll take it down and put it in the implement bar. I want to bring uh, all of the vehicles in here so that nothing, everything doesn't get all iced up and have to scrape off windows and everything when that big storm hits. There's one good thing that'll come out of it. We'll have the world's fanciest counterbalance. that again. Frozen fingers. Ooh. This is the most exciting part of the video. It's kind of like watching the second stage separate the Saturn V rocket. That snow blade's too big to get out to get out the door in its uh, horizontal or its uh, straight position. There, I guess I'll have to. I was going to hook it up outside. I have to turn it at, to an angle. Good grief! Those things are frozen again. It's so cold. I'm a little peckish after that non-productive work there. I'm gonna let's hook this up. I'm gonna take you inside and I'll show you how to make my famous English muffin French toast. Plus, it's probably time if you guys want to see Sweet Loaf. She's pretty cute this morning. Do a little, little sweet loaf update.
See Jack's working on it. What are you working on, Jack? Scraping the snow off of our uh, our Wi-Fi dishes. <laughs> Whenever the internet starts getting slow, we know we've got them covered with snow. Is that the, your invention? I came out here and asked you to do that or to clear that off, and that's what you came up with. What what is that? Uh, I just attached a broom to the end of a piece of pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Works pretty good. Yeah. All right, now we're ready for the snowstorm. Let's check in with Mrs. W. Hey, baby. What's going on in here? Well, she so decided to wake up from her nap early. I thought we need, needed a sweet loaf update. Well, she's doing, she's got a little cold, but other than that, she's doing okay. How are you doing, baby girl, huh? I thought we'd make some French toast. Looks see. like you're already ahead of me here. Yeah. What are you going to cook? What's this? I've got some rolls and some uh, cauliflower. Why is there water in there? Uh, you know the recipe said to put it in there. I don't know. Some... I don't know. <laughs> I just do it. I just follow the recipe. With baking, you should follow the recipe as much as you can. Um, other recipes you can mix a little bit, but baking you should try. What do you think of this beautiful snowy day? It is beautiful There's out. I've almost... not been out. Almost enough to go skiing, not quite. If we got another four inches, we'd have it. How about snowshoeing? Uh, well, there's not really any point, but it is gorgeous there's outside. There's not any point. It is gorgeous outside. Okay, so it looks like you have your hands full. I thought I'd make a little breakfast here. Sounds great. So I can't emphasize the importance of toasting the English muffins first. You know, it's everything. It's all in the details. All in the details. So cut them in half. My sister made us uh, English muffins. Did you taste those? Well, you don't eat the English muffins, but... Uh, I did. I had one. Corinne made English muffins uh, the other day and gave them to us. They were... Delicious. They were the best English muffins I've ever had. All right, into the toaster. How many are you having, Jack? Uh, I'll just have one half. One half? One, okay. So when I make the batter, I use two eggs and then uh, heavy whipping cream. I know, if you're gonna make it, right? Might as well enjoy it. Heavy whipping cream and then a little bit of vanilla, ex pure vanilla. Ooh, that was a lot of vanilla. That was probably more than I needed. Now oh, that's perfect. Just right. So once you make the batter, let that sit and then we'll cook the sausages. These, if you've never had these, uh, Summer, these my parents used to get these things. These Hickory Farms. Yep. Yeah, way back in the day, they were so popular out here that, like during Christmas time, at malls they would open up like a little, like a little pop-up store. Yep. And you could you could buy. Did you guys have the same things? We did. You could buy them um, at the store, and they were they were really a special treat. And they uh, they carry them on Amazon now. So Mrs. W orders them for us for. Although I get them off of the Hickory Farms because they have great sales and free shipping and all that kind of stuff. So I always wait. Stock up. That's why the whole case showed up. <laughs> That's why two boxes of sausages so, came. <laughs> slice them like uh, slice, slice them. Th I like them thinner. You know, even thinner, like like you'd have like a pepperoni. This is a beef sausage, I like that. The key to it though is you got to pan fry them, and when you pan fry them, uh, they'll curl up on you. So the the solution here, what you do is you stack them up there after you cut them. I probably should have just. You probably should do it before I slice them off there, is to cut a, make a cut in there. So they're like a Pac-Man right there, right there. See, waka waka. And always when you're cooking sausage, you have to remember your dog friends. Lucy, since you're the biggest, you get the first one. Heart racer, there you go. There you go, she eats like a lady, she does. What's going on, sweet loaf? She's got a little cold. You got a little cold, you gonna talk for us? She's been really chatty lately. You gonna talk for us? I think she's still hungry. You're, you're the prettiest, almost as pretty as Mrs. W. How's the homeschooling going, Jack? Well, 
I like this part of homeschooling because I get to be on the computer while I'm doing it. Mm, upsides to everything. What are you working on? Um, writing pretty much. I love her chair. One of our friends got this chair. What do you what do you call that? Um, Bumbo. Chair, so she can sit. So she can sit up. <laughs> She's still not quite strong enough to sit up. She she lists over to one side a little bit, but that chair really works good. <laughs> Is she too distracting for you, Jack? Yes. She's more fun than homeschooling. You bet. You know, unless it's reading. She is homeschooling. She's, Literally. She's, le she's learning how to cook French toast. She's learning how to sit up. That too. Whoa. Make sure your peels are hot. But don't burn your butter. I got you that big pan to keep your arms toned. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. That was to keep yours down. Can you lift that pan ex arm extended one hand? <laughs> it's pretty heavy, isn't let, it? Let me try. Not with my arm extended. Can, can you do it, Jack? I want to try. It's really hard. Oh, uh, nah, 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 the, the end. The end is really hard because it, you know, it just weighs you down. The no, end. all the way at the end. All the way the How long can you hold it straight armed out? It's really hard. You know what? It's because you're you're just not made to do that. Why would you try to defy the laws of physics? Oh, that's heavy. It's really heavy. Well, you can do it. It's not. No, you hold. You have to hold it at the end too. I'm at the very end. No, no, you gotta have your hand on the little section. That makes it easier. Right here, like that. Look, yeah. look. This is. You have to do it like this. Oh, off, off the end. No, no, you gotta get your whole hand on there. Okay. That's only reasonable. And she's gonna pop. What is that? She wants to try. You want to try, sweet loaf? Let's see, Jack. That's pretty heavy. Can I? She's actually saying this is ridiculous. Oh, I achieved lift off for a millisecond. What do you have to say? She's not a smart dog. She's nice but dim. She actually has been really smart lately. When she's wanted something, she's been very good about coming up to me and bring me her toy and setting it on the couch and doing exactly what she wants. Opened the door to get the treats out and then barked at me. This is the saddest thing about Heart Racer. You can lift her up with one hand. She loves that, I can tell on her face. The Heart Racer has gotten so chubby this winter, I've started calling her Piggy. Have my husband make the special sauce. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to let him in too long, but with English muffins, you have to fill all the holes. Oh, now see, that's a level of detail that I, even I haven't went to. Yeah, otherwise they're kind of dry. Yeah. So when you're plating your French toast, you have to have a couple of things that are very, very, very important. And that is real butter. Margarine is not allowed. So a nice pat of, pat of butter on there when they're still hot and real maple syrup. Real butter is margarine butter. Yeah, well, margarine is. <laughs> Growing up, my, my uh, butter was expensive. I still it's expensive. Uh, my mom would buy, uh, my dad, he was a real, real butter guy. He had to have that. And uh, so she'd buy real butter for dad. And then my sister and I, we'd get margarine. You know, when you're young and naive, you don't know the difference. And then we, I think one time we ran out of margarine or something, so we had dad's butter, and, and once we got a taste of that, there was no more margarine. We told, we told mom, uh, oops, just a, a tiny, tiny bit, a real maple syrup. No Aunt Jemima, no, what's the other one, Jack, you like? Uh, Butterworth. Butterworth, yeah. No corn syrup, real I've maple syrup. I've never heard of Aunt Jemima. And a little bit of, uh, it's another brand. It's a, and a little bit of powdered sugar. Just a tiny bit, and right there, right there, that is, that is where it's at. Yeah. Instead of making biking safe at Earth, they just, uh, they're trying to tell people to not do it. All right. What a special treat. A snowstorm, an impending snowstorm, and a French toast. Mm-hmm. All right, baby, you want to say a blessing for us? 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this meal, and we ask that you help everyone feel a little bit healthier and that we're able to be together. Amen. 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 Hey, how are you? Do you, want, do you want one of these? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're all stuffy, sweet girl. Ah. Whoa. Can you do the sweet love song? No, I cannot. Why not? <laughs> because I, I can't sing on camera. Yeah, you can. Well, I, don't, I, mean, I don't do math on camera. See? But not very well, anyway. We all have our things we won't do. The thing is, when you're doing math on camera, you try to rush it, and then you end up taking twice as long as you normally would. Then, yeah, then you don't look very smart. What, what do you have to say? Do you have something to say? You sure make a lot of noise. Heart racer, what do you think of the baby? Hmm? Poor heart racer. Ears up! As I sit here at my desk, uh, finishing up the edit on this video, um, just looking out my window and to the north and watching this, the storm roll in off the mountain and the, the snow increasing and picking up, and it's uh, it's a it's a wonderful thing. It's um, yeah, I guess the snow always makes me feel like a a kid again. It's one of the very few things or very few ways in life that I've found that I can reclaim that magic. You remember, you know, remember how that was and it's hard to, hard to get those things back as an adult. It's, uh, I think it's also the, you know, having, a, having your firewood all cut and plenty of food in the larder and, and, uh, your family gathered in and a, a warm home and, and, and everyone safe and, and healthy. And it, it just is a, tremendous reminder of of all of the wonderful blessings and how good God is and uh, even in this dark world um, he still provides for us these things that give us joy and pleasure and and um, and remembrance of him so don't forget for, for for click don't forget to click the thumbs up if you enjoyed these uh, family vlogs and uh, we appreciate your support we'll see you guys in the next video